and welcome to the very first episode of UJTV. We are coming to you from the APK campus in Johannesburg. My name is Marlene Frischi and I'll be with you throughout the show. Of course, I won't be doing this alone. So with me here today, we have the awesome Woody Knox. Hi, Woody. Hello, Marlene. Thank you very much. Hi, folks. Welcome to UJTV. We've got a rare show today with an awesome lineup. We have Vine videos, tech features, what's happening, a lot of cool stuff. Marlene, what else do we have on this show? Of course, we're all about keeping you guys up to date. So we'll also have a lot of international news. We have some local news and what people are doing at UJ. But before we do anything else, yes. we have a thing called Vine videos. Now, I've heard some great controversy. I think you must give us some clarity there. <laughs> Everybody knows about Vine videos. <laughs> well, Vine videos are very simple. Uh, it's an app for your cell phone. What you do, you take six second clips Hold the record button while it records for six seconds, release it and your video is ready to be published. That's pretty simple enough, right? We have some uh, Vine videos coming up next. Let's go check them out. Hi. <laughs> it's just a taser. Nick, mark a Vine. Yo. <laughs> Ek is jammer. <laughs> guys, guys, why do they do that to poor Nick, man? Anyways, guys, we have uh, what's trending up next with Brendan. Thanks for that, Woody. This week, I'm going to tell you guys about what's buzzing in social media. Would you believe me if I told you that there were social media platforms which pay you to post on them? It's quite an unbelievable one, isn't it? Well, there is. Now, we know that Facebook feels strongly about everything being shared, except for the money your posts generate, isn't it? Bonzo Me and, and Bubble News are looking to change this, however. Now, this is Bonzo Me right here. As you can see, I'm in the download menu option only, simply because it's only available on, on the mobile platform, so on your phone, or on an iPad, or perhaps a, a tablet. Bonzo Me promises it uses up to 80% of the revenue its adverts generate for popular posts. That's insane, that really is crazy. So do yourself a favor and get that app and see if you can get those, those posts generated. Secondly, we have Bubble News. Bubble News, however, is a little bit more complex. You can, of course, access it on computer and on mobile platforms. It's, it's up, up to you. They're a little bit more complex, like I said. The formula is based on the number of times that each post is clicked or the traffic it generates. So it's basically per click uh, re remuneration. Having said that, though, I don't think that you can make a living out of this, so don't leave your day job just yet. That is all from me today. Next week, I'll be telling you guys about Instagram's new app, Bolt. So tune in next week. Let's see what Merlin has to show you guys. All right, guys, so last month we celebrated Nelson Mandela Month, and this month we are starting with Women's Month. But before we forget everything about Nelson Mandela Month, here is a quick fact. So in 2009, the United Nations General Assembly decided to make this an internationally recognized day, which is the 18th of July. And today, 126 countries are celebrating 67 minutes for Nelson Mandela. Now, of course, here at UJ, we also did our part. Let's see what we did in What's Happening. the great pleasure of being able to come and meet the students from UJ who for their Mandela Day work have been here to clean up the dam. Oh, it's a huge success. Just look around you uh, in terms of the, the day being successful. The park is beautiful now and we just wish it could be like this every day really. We were here to just play our part in the 67 minutes of uh, Mandela Day and we were picking up papers at the West Dean Dam. He spent 67 years of his life dedicated to the people and his plea was, at the very least, serve, give us 67 minutes of your time where it's not about you but for the, for the next person and try to change someone's life in those 67 minutes. I think it's a very useful and worthwhile initiative. It does raise people's thoughts about volunteering 
uh, as a secretary and the vice chair of the WRA, we are all volunteers and that's what we do. We give our time all through the year, every day, to provide a service to our community. So obviously, anything that can promote that, uh, I think is a very worthwhile thing to do. And I just wish more people would get involved in, in supporting and providing service to their community as the students have today. And while we're on a lighter trend, Summer bodies are made in the winter, or at least that's what they say. So if you're keen on getting that perfect beach body, let's show you how in Young and Fits. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you some cool ways to burn fat and firm up for summer. We'll be using interval training, but also focusing on building some strength. This consists of bursts of high intensity activity followed by a short recovery period. Remember that before you begin any workout you need to make sure that you've properly warmed up to loosen up and avoid injury. Today we'll be warming up with a four minute set of jogging on the spot followed by two minutes of high knee kicks like this. Once done, rest for a minute and then we move on to the next set. We're going to start with mountain climbers. Now these aren't very tough but gauge your own abilities and start slowly to avoid injuries. You do this by getting down into a push-up position and bringing your knee to your chest one leg at a time, like this. Do these for 30 seconds at a fairly quick pace. After that you can rest for 30 seconds before starting the next set. Once you have completed two sets of these, you can rest for 30 seconds and then we move on to the next exercise. The next exercise is fast squats. Start with your feet shoulder distance apart, lower your body until your thighs are almost parallel to the ground and then come back up again. Do these in quick succession for 30 seconds. Rest for 30 seconds and then do one more set of these. And that's it, well done. Now you can rest for 30 seconds before moving on to the final exercise. I'm sure your legs are a bit tired by now, but don't give up, we're nearly done. Now it's time for hopscotch jumps. Start with your feet apart and bring them together as you hop forwards. Then hop forward one more time and separate them again. Reverse that and start again. Now repeat this action for 30 seconds at a pace that is comfortable for you. Once completed, you can rest for 30 seconds and then repeat the cycle one final time. Well done if you managed to complete all those sets. Now we're going to do a cool down stretch. It's important to stretch after a workout to avoid injury and get flexible. For best results, make sure you get a rest day between training days, stay well hydrated and get plenty of sleep. That is all from me. Make sure you watch next time for more tips on how to stay young and fit. And now for some local news. Varsity football has gotten off to an electrifying start with UJ and the University of the Western Cape battling it out in the Belleville Stadium in the Western Cape. The match was led by UJ but ended in a draw. UWC striker Wade Crowey saved the home team from defeat with a phenomenal free kick in the final moments of the match. Be sure to catch this exciting football season on Supersport Channel 210 or get out to the Tuck Stadium on the 4th of August for the next match. And then Wes Dean's very own Declan Wright just shattered his second world record earlier in July. 10-year-old Wright successfully broke the 5,000 meter record in under 10 and under 11 categories with a time of 17 minutes and 6 seconds. This beats the previous world record by a monumental 12 minutes. This is not the first record he's broken. Earlier this year, Wright broke the 1,000 meter record, a record that had not been broken in 39 years. 
Young Declan said after beating his latest record barefoot in Durban, I feel so good. It's so nice to break world records. Now we agree, right? So keep up the good work and you're making Joburg proud. And then SA's Got Talent is back for a smoking hot third season and auditions will be held at the UJ campus this weekend. So if you have talent and you want to be on TV, now is your chance. To find more about SA's Got Talent, Google is a good place to start. Now speaking about interesting things happening, let's go over to Woody on something called Fuel Deal. We as UJ, we've got a program that we shoot ourselves. Um, it's for the Cecil Solar Challenge, which is going to take part in August. It's the day before the race is set to start and all three teams meet up at CSIR. Scrutineering is done before the race to make sure that all of the cars can maintain a consistent standard of safety and mobility throughout the race. This is Fuel Duel. Guys, we have Nicholas on stage today. How are you doing, Nicholas? Hey, Woody, nice being here. Thank nice, you. Nice to have you on stage. So, what do we, what do we have over here? What is this? <laughs> Tell me what it does. Because it looks actually, very interesting. <laughs> it is very interesting. It's actually a robot built by the fourth year UJ students at the engineering department. Hmm. It doesn't have a name yet, um, but we're talking, it's in the pipeline. We're thinking of naming it Niklas. I think it's Nicholas? appropriate. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, it was built by the fourth year students here at UJ and it won the best um, engineering project last year. Okay, I see it's got quite a lot of, uh, it's, it's very technological in yes. essence. Um, it's got some cameras, I can see it's got <laughs> eyes as well. Uh, what did you use for the eyes? Yes, actually um, what they use for the eyes is a camera called the Asus um, Action Pro Live. Hmm. And it's very similar to your normal, you know, your Connect where your, your um, Xbox Connect, where you wave and play tennis. And I stuff. love those. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's very similar yeah. to that. This cam is just for developers. So what they've done, they incorporated this into the design and it takes 3D images um, mm. of the surroundings. So you can send this robot into any room. It's completely autonomous. You don't have to control it. And it creates a 3D map of your environment. So when there's a chair, it would know how it would know to turn and not bump into things. Oh man. And um, is it, uh, can you use it via remote control perhaps? Or do you have to well, link it to your computer? Yes, it connects to your computer. So you can check on your computer what it's doing, what it's seeing, but you don't have to control it at all. It does it yeah. all by itself. It's a very smart um, design. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, man. I want this. I'm like, I can yeah, see. I know. <laughs> it's got a bit of, it's got a, I don't know if, can I hold it, man? Yes, yeah, sure. It's got a doorbell as well. What is that for? Right this here at the back. This is actually just putting it on and off. <laughs> this is all the switches and connecting to your computer. Okay. So it's not a doorbell, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it looks like one. Uh, that's pretty cool. And now, so is everyone just, is anyone allowed to, well, welcome to come to UJ and build a robot yes. or some technology te technological stuff pardon me yes what's cool about this techno lab at UJ is they actually have workshops over the holidays okay. and these workshops aren't just for engineering students if you're in primary school you'd come there's for secondary school there's for students so you could come do different engineering workshops and you can even buy a kit, come and build your own robot, take it home and play with it at home. Ah, uh, that's cool, man. And where can one find out more about the Techno Lab? Well, you can just head over to UJ's website, check it out there under the engineering department. Or if you're around, you can head here to campus on the 16th of August and come check out the open day of the engineering department. Oh man, that is really, really cool stuff. Nick, I hope that people out there are uh, inspired to go out and actually start doing some innovative stuff. stuff yeah. yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming onto the show, Nick. It was such a pleasure. Looking forward to seeing you again next definitely, week. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Now guys, um, the UJ students have built a solar powered, um, eco-friendly car using nothing but their bare hands and raw materials. This is for the solar Sassel Solar Challenge. Cecil Solar Challenge race, which is happening in August. Um, so you guys should definitely come and check that one out. Let's go check out what's happening with the progress. So this is our solar car. So if you have a look here, we've actually got a mold at the bottom here that we've added a steel frame to just to reinforce it. Now we've flipped the car over and now we're producing molds for the bottom. So once that's done, we can actually use the molds to produce the final parts. Over here we got Charles and he's helping us mix some resin for the car. Now mixing this resin is absolutely crucial and it's made out of two parts. The first part of course is the resin and the second part is the hardener. 
For each litre of resin we throw in, we have to add exactly 333 grams of hardener. Then it's all for the application. Now, as we apply this, we have to ensure that all the bubbles are mixed out and that no weak spots can be made. That advice, of course, coming from one of our top mold experts here at Epsilon Engineering, Alan. As we apply this, we have to force out all the bubbles to get rid of those pesky weak spots. And as we lay off the glass, we have to make sure that the layers are staggered so that we don't induce any weak spots with the joins of the glass, just making the mold as strong as possible. We produced a nice shiny plug from a piece of polystyrene. Now we've produced the bottom mold, two side molds, which we're busy with at the moment, and we've got a middle piece mold still to make. So this has taken quite a while, but we've, we're really getting somewhere. And hopefully we'll be able to finish in three weeks. Uh, once the molds are done, there's a little bit of prep work that we need to do, and then it's onto the carbon. Then we have to be very careful what we do to make sure the car is absolutely perfect. Yep, let's get back to it. <laughs> I really like initiatives like this. I think it's important that people be pushed outside of their limits a bit, just to think out of the box. And I really hope they get done in time. It's really such an exciting time at UJ. Oh yes, indeed. I mean, that's innovative, creative, you know, resourceful engineering right Next there. Level. I'm really proud of our boys over there. And they've got only three weeks to go, eh? Hey? Leaves them with uh, little time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm yeah, sure they'll be fine. Definitely. I mean, what do you think they're gonna, do you think they're gonna paint the car? Um, if it were me, yeah. I would go with orange, you know, like the whole UJ patriotism thing. Okay. I don't know, what would you do? Um, you know, I don't have a favorite color really, I just love all colors. So I think uh, the rainbow colors would be the safest best. The all rainbow nation on this car. <laughs> the rainbow nation on the car, you know, then I'll have to have a ride in it. That might well It'll match my hair. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Folks, it's been such a lovely Friday with you guys. Thank you for joining us on the show. From myself, Woody Knox. And from me, Madeline Fischer, it was a pleasure being with you guys. Hope to see you next week. Cheerio, guys. Bye.